to recycle clay is one of the most essential things that any independent potter can learn to do. Um, in my studio, I might have clay in all sorts of stages of recycling. I have it in bags, I have it in buckets, and I might have it even in a plaster mold. Uh, one of the first things that I want to address is immediate recycling of scraps on the any day that you generate them. So these are trimming scraps. Now, what I typically would do with something like this, depending on how wet it is, and they should be leather hard, I mean when you're trimming they should be leather hard, I would either douse them down with a nice generous spritz of water, or sometimes I would actually submerge them in a little bucket of water, maybe even in my slip bucket, kind of let them dry off there or drip off, and then I'm going to go ahead and put them in a bag. Now, this sort of recycling can uh, yield you nice plastic clay it, given given 24 hours. It can yield plastic clay again. There we go. And uh, I would just you know wrap that up, close up that bag, and and that's that would be nice and wedgeable tomorrow. Um, the uh, other thing that I wanted to talk about is when clay gets very, very dry. Let's say, for instance, if you look at the clay in these buckets, I often have, as I said, various states of clay that need to be recycled. I've got bone dry clay here, and what I would do is when I do have bone dry clay, is I would put all the bone dry clay in a bucket. You can see I have a three gallon bucket here on the floor, and I just put all my bone dry clay in there and then I uh, cover it with water. Now I still have some standing water on here, I'll get some of that off, but once you cover it with water and it stands for a little bit, then it will all get to the uh, slip stage. And this is an excellent um, stage in which to uh, recycle it because it's now all you know, even, I don't have big lumps in there or anything, I can put this into a plaster mold, which is what I've got going on over here. So this was clay that I had in a plaster mold, probably put it in there a couple of weeks ago to be honest. I did also throw a cloth over the top, so it was covered with a cloth uh, because I didn't want the, it was like a heavy towel, I didn't want this top part to get dried out or anything. So this is all evenly moist and it has been sitting in this plaster mold. Um, I am ready to take this out. Hold on just a minute. Actually, I'll just stop this and I'll come back and I'll show you this when I have it on a tripod. So this is the clay that I had in my mold and it is a, a nice kind of a plastic condition. If it does get a little bit hard, um, if it's been, if you let it sit a little too long, this is a simple trick that I use. I even do this sometimes if my clay has uh, just been sitting in the bag new and I, it's just a little on the stiff side. What I'll do is I'll cut it into some slices. Okay, and this is actually plastic enough. I don't really have to do this, but I just want to show you how. Actually, I'll put this in the same bag that I had my uh, scrap before. Okay, so I've cut my clay into some slices. I will dunk it in the water, and then I'll just drop it in the bag. This is uh, just in case you need to add just a little bit of moisture. This is still good for clay that's a, maybe just a little stiffer than the uh, maybe nice plastic stage that you uh, want to work with it. You just need to add a little bit of moisture. This is very helpful. Um, if you're wondering about this tool that I'm using, this is a, a mud tool, a, a Cheryl mud tool. I absolutely am a huge fan of mud tools. Um, there are all sorts of different uh, uh, things that you can use. Uh, you'll see in any of my videos where I use a rib, I always gravitate towards my Cheryl uh, mud tool ribs. They're just indispensable. They are the best ones on the market, in my opinion. And um, this uh, little wiggly wire cutter is really quite nice. Um, there are straight wire cutters and the wiggly wire cutters. Um, if I'm going to recycle like this, I really do like this wiggly wire cutter, and I'll tell you why. It gives you more surface area, grooves up and down for it to absorb the moisture, and it's, uh, you know, kind of like scoring. It gives you more surface area when you attach pieces. Well, this gives you more surface area for the water to absorb. Um, really, re recycling, learning to recycle your own clay in an efficient manner is so important. 
if you're an independent potter and if you do not have a pug mill, like I don't have a pug mill here at home, uh, I have to recycle all my scrap by hand. And I'm very careful about debris ending up in my clay. Uh, you know, I have to, I keep a clean studio, so whenever I have scrap, I know I'm not getting weird uh, debris uh, mixed up in my recycle. And um, yeah, it's just a really, really important thing to know how to do. Now, obviously, wedging is going to be a, a really important thing with this, too. After this sits, you're going to take the clay and you're going to wedge it up, which I can show you that in just a minute. I'll finish this and then I'll come back and I'll show you more. Okay. Now, this is my plaster mold. It's just a, you know, what, two and a half inch uh, mold that has kind of a, a bowl shape interior that I use for recycling. So this is my slip that has been sitting here covered with water for quite a few weeks. Um, and I say quite a few weeks because I haven't been down here to work much. It's been winter time and I uh, have had some other things on my list of priorities to get done besides recycling clay. So I'm going to pretty much fill up this mold and anything that I can't fit in, I will just cover this with a cloth to make sure that it does not get dried out. Oh, found a hair. Looks like I'm the only one to blame for that. If I find a hair like that, I usually try to take take that out and put it in the trash. Now, the one thing that I want to just caution you of to, again, be very, very careful about debris and foreign matter like tools. I once remember hearing a story of a potter who, he was a professional potter that did it full time, and he used to recycle his clay by hand and he was wedging some one time and got a needle tool in his clay, which was quite awful. And one time at school, I do have a pug mill at school, but I was dipping into the slip bucket like this to get the, um, the slip and trimmings out of the slip bucket. And one of my students at school left a small needle tool in there and it shoved up under my fingernail and that hurt quite a bit. So do always be extra careful about debris, making sure that you're not getting debris in there. Now this, as I said, uh, previously, that will get covered with a towel or a cloth. This is my old cloth that I use sometimes. It's just cotton, something that's a little thicker. Just like that, it'll allow it to dry. Um, I, I'm doing it like this because I'm really not going to be in a hurry. I can let it sit like that for weeks and it will dry slowly and it'll be okay. And uh, next, I want to talk a little bit about um, clean up at the sink over here and let's come over to my sink. Okay, at my sink I have a bucket here that I use for preliminary cleaning. I don't just wash this clay down my sink. This is my initial bucket that will catch a lot of the clay. Every once in a while I will just drain the water off of this bucket and then I'll take the residual out and I have a pretty big yard. We have a couple of acres so I take it out to a you know an old edge of the yard where there's a fence post and no one will ever see it and I'll just dump the the uh, residual uh, clay sludge out there in the yard. Um, also I wanted to talk about my method of recycling under the sink. So let me pop this out. Okay I'm gonna show you down here. I have what I think is a very brilliant invention. It is called a Glaco trap. Um, it, co it ran me about $100, I think. So uh, another little plug here for the Glaco company. But if you're looking for a good means to uh, trap some of your clay, it's awesome. Uh, what you do with this is you just uh, take out the what do you call it? The gooseneck in the uh, in the bottom of your pipe here, and then you can see the installation is pretty easy. It's over here, and it's right here, and then uh, the 
uh, clay and water comes down in here, the clay settles into the trap, and then the water goes back up and out the drain pipe. So you can kind of see the layer of sediment right there. When you're ready to um, change this, you just put like a bowl or something underneath this pipe. That's your overflow flow pipe. You'll turn on that valve. It'll drain the water out of the pipe and everything here. And then you can just unscrew the trap. Uh, they sell extras like you can actually discard the trap if if you want to. And you know, for a couple bucks, you just put on it, screw on a new container, or you could clean it out, which I end up by doing that because again, I'm kind of cost effective here. Okay, so that's that's a little bit about the sink maintenance. Uh, washing clay right down your sink can be a really bad thing. So I do keep, uh, you know, a bucket here. It's a little nuisance. It's a little in the way, but I'm used to it, and I just use it as my preliminary washing. And again, I I rinse it out, you know, clean out the sludge and stuff every couple weeks. One thing you want to know about recycling clay is if you happen to have some clay which is not bone dry but it's also definitely not leather hard. This is very, very stiff clay. This is not going to work well just to drop in the bucket of uh, trimmings and slake it down. That is much too solid to absorb water. What I typically do with something like this, I will allow it to get bone dry. I'll just let it sit out, get it bone dry, and then I'll just kind of break it up. I'll sometimes take it out on my patio or something and uh, just knock it around on the concrete and get it to break up into smaller pieces and then I'll put it in the bucket to slake it down. Uh, clay which is in a large lump and it's you know beyond leather hard but not bone dry not a good idea to try to recycle that. Always break it up and get it bone dry. And the last thing that I want to cover is how you prepare this clay for use after you have recycled it. So this is this is a different bag of scrap than what I showed you earlier, but it is plastic. It's scrap that I've squirted down. It was all trimming scrap, or in this case, it, it might have been something else, slabs or something, handles. What I want to do is really wedge this up. It takes a little bit longer wedging than, of course, clay right off the block. The purpose of this is to really completely mix it, get it very, very nice and uniform. As you wedge, you have to be careful about as you turn, push and turn, you just want to push it onto itself, rotate it a little bit, trying not to flatten it out and trap bubbles. Now, another good idea is to occasionally come in here with a wire cutter, or I'm just using my, again, my Cheryl uh, wiggly wire cutter, okay? and. What I want to do is I'm going to take these slices that I just made and I'm going to force them down on edge so if there's air bubbles in there it's going to shoot out to the side. And now I'm going to take the next one and do right on top. That's my favorite way to really get the clay mixed while wedging. So I'll just give it maybe another minute of this. And then I'm going to have nice plastic clay completely ready to work again and throwable. And that is how you can recycle your clay and uh, have a nice efficient recycling system. Just, you know, have your, your dry stuff that you cover with water, let it sit and slake down, put that slake down stuff in a mold, let it dry and get leather hard. Uh, not leather hard, let it get plastic, and then you'll be ready to wedge and work with it. Oh, and FYI, just one other little thing I'll mention is uh, my studio is in my basement, and because basements do have a tendency to be damp, I do have a dehumidifier in the basement, so it is constantly trying to draw some of the moisture out of my basement, so it's not excessively moist down here. All right, hope that helps. Hope you, uh, you know, can use some of those tips in your own studio. 